Well, I guess the first step is to admit I was in denial, right? Go on. It's just that, honestly, I didn't think Google would ever go through with it. You thought third-party cookies were just a permanent part of the fabric of the internet economy? Yeah, exactly. And now? And now Google's actually started deprecating them, and I need to learn what to do about it. And that's why you're here? And that's why I'm here. My agency told me to come to you to learn about this thing Google's proposing to replace third-party cookies. The privacy sandbox. The privacy sandbox. Well... I've read up on some of it. Topics is cookie list contextual targeting. Protected audience is cookie list retargeting. Then I hit private state tokens and it all just went over my head. Mm. Say more on that. I get that private state tokens are supposed to help us fight fraudulent traffic by authenticating site visitors as real people, which we used to use third party cookies to do. I just don't get how the validating and passing works. And your agency thought I could unpack it for you. Yeah. Your agency's the issuer. The what? It's one of the parties involved in private state tokens. There's the issuer, which vouches for a site visitor's authenticity. That would be your agency. The redeemer, which needs to confirm a site visitor's authenticity. That would be you. And then the site visitor, which would be you. That's right. Your agency knows me, so when you ask them if I was just some quack, they were able to endorse me as legitimate. And because you trust them, you accepted me as credible. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but say that all checks out. I don't imagine sites are just supposed to be constantly calling one another to see if each and every site visitor is the real deal. Not exactly. How it works is the site visitor visits the issuer's site and takes some action that indicates they can be trusted to be a real person, like they make a purchase or sign in with an email address. The issuer site then tells the site visitor's browser it wants to create what's called a private state token for the site visitor. This token is stored with the browser. Now, when the site visitor visits another site, the Redeemer site, the Redeemer asks the browser if it has any tokens for this visitor. But how does the Redeemer site know it can trust those tokens? Like, can't some bot farm just start basically minting private state tokens? Good question. No. The Redeemer tells the browser to check for tokens from a specific issuer. What if the browser doesn't have any tokens from that issuer? then the Redeemer can check for tokens from another issuer. And if the browser has a token from a given issuer, then the browser asks the issuer's site to send what's called a redemption record, which is like a letter of recommendation for the site visitor. The Redeemer can then include this redemption record when it makes a call to ad tech companies to sell ads to the site visitor. Hmm. Wait a minute. Then can't the issuer site and the Redeemer site use private state tokens to track a person? How do you mean? Well, the Redeemer knows this person had visited the issuer site. Only the top level domain though. So a Redeemer can know that a person visited, oh, I don't know, digiday.com, but it can't know which specific page on digiday.com the person visited. Fine, but still the Redeemer could just keep asking the browser to check for tokens from other issuers and use that to start building a profile of the different sites this person's visited. Well, according to my notes, the browser is supposed to only redeem one token per top-level page view. Plus, there's a limit of two issuers that can be contacted per top-level origin. And the browser is supposed to remember which issuers an origin used before. Now, tell me about your mother. What the f***? <laughs>